Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Builders with the miracle tip. King size, regular, both at the same low price. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so late, Mr. Dillon. You know, it's five miles to Fort Dodge and five miles back, Chester. Figuring the time you were gone, you traveled about two miles an hour. Well, Major Honeyman kept me waiting almost three hours, Mr. Dillon. Well, why didn't you leave the papers with the first sergeant? You told me to deliver them to the major. <clears throat> well, I should have explained, I guess. Well, that's all right. Me and the first sergeant enjoyed a couple of beers at the sutler's. Oh, well, I trust Major Honeyman didn't mind waiting. Him? Oh, no, sir. It was me, Mr. Dillon. You see, when I got there... Uh, it's all the right. It doesn't was... matter. It's all right, Chester. It's all right. Wait. After all, it's a pretty hot day. Oh, hot ain't nothing like it. You know, sir, I, I was wondering all the way back, do you think maybe someday they'll invent a way to kind of cover up the sun a little? What? Uh, who's they, Chester? Well, I don't know. The, the people that works on stuff like that. Them fellas that goes to school and all. You think they will? Well, I think any man that went to school very long ought to have more sense than to try to cover up the sun. Oh, well, I didn't mean all the way up. I meant just part of it. Oh, well, I can think of one man that's already done that. Really? Who's that? A fella called John B. Stetson. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon, I'm serious. <laughs> so am I, Chester. Marshal Dillon? Ah, hello. Jim Hill, Marshal, from Amarillo. How do you do? Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Chester, I'm glad to know you. I'm looking for a man, Marshal. Fella called Dan Gratt. You know him? No, never heard of him. Uh, have you, Chester? Mm, ain't no Dan Gratt around here. Well, he's coming here. Told one of his girls in Amarillo he was. I'll wait for him. Well, what do you want him for, Hill? Murder. Murder? He shot three men in Amarillo. Two of them in a fair fight, but he made a mistake with the last one. Grad didn't know it, but the man wasn't even armed. A friend of yours? No, I didn't know him. Some gambler. Yeah. Then why are you after Grat? I thought maybe you'd heard of me, Marshal. I'm Sheriff of Amarillo. Oh, I see. Well, it's been a long time since I've been in Amarillo. <laughs> it's no quieter than it ever was. But it'll get worse if I don't stop men like Dan Grat. No matter how far they run. You said he didn't know the man wasn't armed. Well, why would he be running? He found out after he'd shot him. They say it shamed him killing an unarmed man. One thing about Grad Marshal, he ain't no coward. Yeah. But he enjoys shooting people, huh? He's a gunman. And I'll tell you something, Marshal. Dan Grad ain't well known. But he's about as handy with a gun as anybody in the state of Texas. Men who watched him say he's the fastest they ever saw, bar none. Well, I'll help you take him, Sheriff. I only come here to tell you what I was doing in Dodge, Marshal. I don't need no help. Well, he's just a murderer. Why take a chance? I'm pretty good myself, Marshal. I ain't afraid of him. Oh, okay. And if you run into him first, save him for me. I'd hate to have made the ride up here for nothing. 
I'm uh, staying at the Dodge House, Marshal, if you want to find me. So long. So long. Hmm. Mr. Dillon, I don't quite make him out. Oh, why not, Chester? Well, I mean not wanting you to help him. If it's true what he says about this Dan Grat. Uh, the sheriff's like a lot of men, Chester. He's too proud, too confident in himself. It'll get him in trouble someday. Yes, sir. It's a mistake some gunmen make, too. You mean like Dan Grat? Oh, I don't care about Dan Grat, Chester. It's Sheriff Hill I'm worried for. L and M filters are sweeping the country. L and M. The filter tip cigarette everyone's talking about. Everyone's changing, too. Here's what Joan Bennett told us. Never before have I found a filter so good, a taste I enjoy so much as in L&M's. And David Wayne says, L&M's have the best filter of them all. Miracle Tip is right. There's nothing like it. Diana Lynn wrote, I had no idea a filter cigarette could taste as good as L&M's. They're light and mild and full of flavor. Yes, L&M filters are truly sweeping the country, breaking more sales records every day. The reason? It's the filter that counts, and no filter compares with L&M's Miracle Tip. Notice how easy it draws. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine. Yes. This is it, L&M filters. This is it, something new. Now two sizes. L&M filters, new king size and regular too. This is it, L&M filters, L&M filters with the miracle tip. So join the trend to L&M. King size, regular. Both at the same low price. Thanks, Kitty. Why didn't Chester come over? Oh, he's waiting at the bar for a friend of his. Uh-huh. Man or woman? A oh, man. He owes Chester some money, he said. Uh, then they won't be friends for long. Well, it's only two dollars. I lost friends for less money than that. <laughs> you must have lived among mighty poor people. Any camp I've been in, most of the citizens went from rich to poor a couple of times every month. Well, that beats working for a living. If you believe that, why don't you take up gambling, Matt? You know, sometimes I think that might be a good idea. Well, it's safer than what you're doing now. Out of being safe, all I wanted, I'd take up raising hogs and potatoes, Kitty. That's about what I figured. They told me at the bar you was Marshal Dillon. Yeah, that's right. I just rode into town, Marshal. You're the first man I wanted to see. Now, what about? It's like this, Marshal. I'm kind of free and easy in my ways. Sometimes people don't understand. Understand what? That they shouldn't try to stop me. Well, nobody's stopping you, stranger. You do whatever you want. Short of breaking the law. It's a law I'm talking about, Marshal. All right, say it plain, mister. Sure. I get in a fight. I killed somebody. I don't want no trouble about it. That plain enough? Where are you from? Texas. Amarillo. How'd you know? The sheriff, Jim Hill, he's here waiting for you. Grat. Where is he? I don't know. He'll probably be in here later. Why don't you wait? No. I'll find him. After I do, we'll talk some more, Marshal. Grat. What? About breaking the law here. 
That includes resisting arrest. You explain it to me later, Marshal. Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Chester, go find Sheriff Hill and tell him Dan Gratz in town. The least we can do is warn him. Okay, sir. Where's your gun, Chester? My gun? Oh, it, it must be over at the office. I'll go right over and get it. Well, you better find the sheriff first. And hurry. Yes, sir. I, I'll try the dog house. Can't you stop it, Matt? I can't interfere with another lawman kidding. I offered to help, but he wouldn't have it. Why not? You too proud? Yeah, that's right, Kitty. He's too proud. You think Grat's going to kill him? Well, I think he'll try. You don't like not being able to do anything about it, do you, Matt? No, Kitty, I don't. Matt! Yeah, you stay in here, Kitty. Grat found him, Mr. Dillon. Right there in the street. He, he yelled at him, and then he shot him. As soon as he turned around, got set. Oh, that Grat's the one fastest man I ever saw. I mean, he... Well, he's just terrible Keep fast. out of the way, Chester. He's waiting for me. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Marshal? I break one of your laws? You just killed a man, Gret. He ain't the first man I've killed. Jim Hill was a lawman. He was here to arrest you for murdering an unarmed man in Amarillo. I didn't know he was unarmed. Your mistake. I'd have killed him anyway. I can kill anybody. Like you. Right now. See, Marshal, how easy it is. How is he, Doc? Well, I, I can't tell yet, Chester. Oh, Doc, he was hit in the head as well as the arm, Chester, and he's still unconscious. We'll know what damage it did when he comes to and not before. I've done everything I can for him. Yeah, I know, Doc. Of course you have. Another fraction of an inch, he'd be dead now. As it is, he may be all right in ten days. Uh, or, well... Well, who knows? I don't. It... Brad hit him first shot. I could tell. Mr. Dillon still got one off. I, I don't know why he had to miss him. Of course he missed him, Chester. Matt was out on his feet when he fired that shot. He dropped his gun before he fell. And who wouldn't with two bullets in his arm? Is it ruined, Doc? His arm? No, no, it's not ruined. He'll be stiff for a while. But... Doc? Mm-hmm. I'd have tried to kill Grat if I'd have had my gun. I, I was going to pick up Mr. Dillon's and do it, but Grat kicked it away from me. It's a good thing he did. I wanted to kill him. I know, Chester. I know how you felt. It's a terrible thing watching a man like Mr. Dillon get shot that way, Doc. Of course it is, Chester, but killing Grat won't help him now. Well, if Mr. Dillon dies, I'll kill him. I'll get me a shotgun and I'll kill him. I'll but blow then... him in half, then we'll see how doggone fast no, he is. No, 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 no. Calm down, Chester. You mustn't get it. I tell you, you go put some coffee on the stove right over there, yeah? We'll both need it before the night's out. Okay, Doc. But I sure hate to think of Grat standing around at some bar bragging how he shot down Mr. Dillon. Bartender, give me some whiskey. Coming up. You're Dan Gratt, huh? I don't know you, mister. Uh, no offense, I, I heard your name, Gratt. Everybody's talking about you. What are they saying? 
How you shot the marshal and all? You're pretty fast, Grat. The man to beat me ain't found a father yet. How come you didn't kill the marshal? He's still alive? They say he is. Whiskey. What's this, bartender? Shot of whiskey. I said I wanted some whiskey. Well, that's whiskey. Don't fool with me. Get me the bottle. This here's Dan Grant, bartender. Fellow that shot Marshal Dillon tonight. You didn't say you wanted the bottle. Get it. I don't know. What's the matter with him? You friend of the Marshal? Some is, some ain't. How about you? Me? I don't care what we're telling. Make up your mind. Well, sure, Grant. I, I'm on your side. I wouldn't be talking to you if I wasn't. I guess I got some more convincing to do around here about who's top dog. Not me, Grant. You don't have to convince me. Then act like it. Well, sure, sure. I, I was asking how come you didn't kill the marshal. He dropped his gun when I hit him in the arm. Why that stop you? I don't shoot unarmed men. You don't? What? I said, don't you? You're armed, mister. Now, Grant, I ain't done nothing. I don't I... like your talk. You know about me, don't you? That gambler should have had a gun in Amarillo. I, I don't know what you're saying, Grant. I don't know nothing about you. Take out your gun, mister. Go on, take it out. Well, no, Grant, no. Do I... what I tell you. <gasps> but not me. No, I, I didn't. Your no. time's up. I didn't. Oh, Matt will be glad to see you, Kitty. He's conscious? Oh, sure, he has been all morning, since about dawn. <laughs> of course, he's slept some since then. Is he going to be all right, Doc? Is that Kitty? Uh-oh, there's your answer. <laughs> Let's go back and see him. Hello, Matt. That's nice of you to come by, Kitty. I was going to make you some soup or something, but... I thought I'd see what you wanted first. Oh, good. You know, that's been worrying me, Kitty. I was hoping somebody would come by in time to keep me from being poisoned by Doc's cooking. <laughs> oh, poisoned by Doc's... Oh, oh, you watch what you're saying, Matt. <laughs> I could decide you're too sick to eat. Yeah, I could. I could keep you starved for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be worth it to you, Doc. Not with me taking up your bed the whole time. How long will he be in bed, Doc? Oh, maybe ten days. Five will do it. I said ten. <laughs> I'll make you a bet, Doc. You ought to rest, Matt. Especially with your arm hurt. You wouldn't dare go out till you can use it again. I, uh... I hear Grat killed another man last night. Some stranger. They say Grat slapped him and then shot him down. Just like that. And he was standing real close to him. Huh? Why? What's that got to do with it? Now, Grat's the fastest man I ever saw, Kitty. And that's his weakness. What do you mean? It makes him overconfident. He draws and shoots so fast, most men haven't got a chance. Like Sheriff Hill. He didn't even shoot back. Well, how's that a weakness? Now, Grat was lucky with Hill. But with me, a fraction of an inch, and he'd have missed entirely. And if he had, I'd have killed him. No, it's simple, Kitty. He doesn't take time to shoot straight. He doesn't think he has to. And he'll die for that someday. Matt. Yeah? You're not going to face him again. As soon as I'm able to. You can't, with that arm. Uh, Gratz is sure of himself he might not even notice my arm. What do you mean? He already knows about it. He does what? You'll see, Kitty. When the time comes. This is it. Ellen and filters. This is it. Something new. Now two sizes. 
M&M filters, new king size and regular too. This is it. L&M filters, L&M filters with the miracle tip. L and M filters are sweeping the country, breaking more sales records every day. The reason? It's the filter that counts. And no filter compares with L and M's miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. And notice how easy it draws. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine. Effective filtration. Our statement of quality goes unchallenged. L&M is America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Buy L&M king size. Buy L&M regular. Buy a carton of L&M's king size regular. Both at the same low price. L&M, light and mild. It made Doc awful mad, but five days later I got up. And then for the next week I spent every day down by the river, drawing and shooting, drawing and shooting for hours on end. Doc told me I'd have a headache and the gunfire didn't help ease it, but I kept on. Grat found a fight and killed another man while I was at it. And I guess that spurred me some. Finally I'd had enough. And I went into the office one noon where Chester was waiting for me. I declare, Mr. Dillon, your arm won't never heal if you keep working it so hard. Oh, my arm's in fine shape, Chester. Well, I don't see how it could be. And I'm hoping Grat won't see how it could be either. I don't understand, Mr. Dillon. Now, Grat's so sure of himself, I'm gambling he won't notice it. Notice what? My gun. Your gun? Why... You're wearing it in your belt, Mr. Dillon. What'd you do with your holster? It's hanging on the wall over there, Chester, where it's been all week. Well, forevermore. It's easier on your arm drawing it from your belt, is that it? Well, that's part of it, Chester. Uh, have you seen Grat today? Yes, sir. This morning, over at the Alifraganza, playing Pharaoh. Yeah. All right, Chester. Go find him, will you? Yes, sir. But what'll I tell him? Tell him that uh, I'm going to arrest him about sundown. Let's say five o'clock. And I'll start looking for him in the plaza. That way the word will get her on and nobody but us will get hurt. <laughs> Mr. Dunley just gives me the jumps for us to be sitting out here all alone. Ain't hardly five o'clock yet, and Dodge already looks like a ghost town. Ain't one person here in the plaza. Uh, I can see a few heads peeking out here and there, Chester. Mm, vultures, that's what they are, waiting for somebody to die. I... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dillon, I... I, I, I didn't... Uh, somebody to... usually does die in a gunfight, Chester. It ain't fair. You with a bad arm... Can't you wait a while, Mr. Dillon? No. No. Gratz killed too many men already. No, I've waited long enough. Well, I'll fight him. By golly, I will. I'll fight him. You would, wouldn't you, Chester? Yes, sir. Thank you. Just to get out of the way now. No. You heard me, Chester. Yes, sir.
All right. That's far enough, Grat. I was just going to shake hands with you, Marshal. What? Before I kill you. You're a brave man, Marshal. I shot you down once and you're back even before you're well. You're either brave or you're crazy. Doesn't matter, does it? No. I'll kill you anyway. You're pretty sure of that, aren't you, Greg? Why shouldn't I be? I already know I can outdraw you, even without your arm being bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You can. Never saw a man wanted to die so much as you do. What's the matter with you, Marshal? Wait a minute. You ain't wearing a gun. It's stuck in my belt. Oh, yeah. Well, that'll make it even easier, won't it? Let's find out, Gratz. You got him, Mr. Dillon. You got him. Yeah. You hit him all three shots. I could see every one of them. Well, I took more time than he did. And he took plenty. But he was too sure of himself, Chester. And that's what I was counting on. He drawed first, though. Yeah, he wasn't in any hurry this time, Chester. He knew I couldn't do much with a bad arm. Well, he was sure wrong. You killed him with it. You don't see any better than he did, Chester. What? The gun in my belt, Chester. The butt's pointing to the left. That's going to be weeks before I can use my right arm again. My golly, that's right, yeah. You use your left hand. It wasn't until I started to draw that he noticed it. And when he did, it gave me an extra second. And it cost him his life. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you. If you're a filter tip smoker, you should be smoking L&M's. Everyone agrees L&M's are just what the doctor ordered. The first filter that really does the job. And a real good taste to go with it. Maybe you'll prefer L&M king size, as I do, or L&M regular. But either size, I know you'll like them, and I know you'll stick with them. L&M's. Try them. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Paul Dubov, Harry Bartell, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Hear Gunsmoke every Saturday, this same time, this same station. Hear the great new Perry Como radio show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, also on CBS Radio. This is the CBS Radio Network.